Alrighty, so Minnesota just lost 27-10 to the Niners in the divisional round. Uh, Garoppolo, 11 of 19 for 131, 6.4 average, one touchdown, one pick, sacked twice, and had a 74.7 quarterback rating. Very pedestrian numbers. What are not so pedestrian numbers are the next ones I'm about to read. <laughs> Coleman, 22 carries for 105, averaged 4.8 yards, and it got two scores. Raheem Mostert, 12 carries for 58 yards, also 4.8 yards a carry. Breda, 8 for 17. Uh, Debo Samuel carried once for 6. Garoppolo, 4 carries for 0 yards, but they count Neil Downs as, you know, negative yards lost. But in total, 47 carries. For 186 yards, 4.0 average, and the two point, well, not the two, the two Tevin Coleman scores. And then receiving wise, Debo Samuel, 3 of 6 for 42 yards. Kendrick Bourne, 3 of 5 for 40 yards, and the opening drive touchdown from Jimmy Garoppolo. And Emmanuel Sanders, 2 of 2 for 33. Kittle, 3 of 5 for 16. They are 5 of 12 on 3rd down, that's 42%. O of 1 on 4th down, 3 of 5 in the red zone, so 60%. Um, technically, a 0 turnover margin, but it's really a plus 1 because that fumble at the end of the game was it had no impact. Um, 5 penalties for 38 yards and held the ball for 38 minutes and 27 seconds. Minnesota... Uh, Kirk, 21 of 29 for 172, 5.9 average, one touchdown, one interception, was sacked six times for 46 yards lost, and an 84.3 quarterback rating. Also very pedestrian numbers. And then the uh, not even pedestrian numbers, Dalvin Cook, nine carries for 18 yards, 2.0 average, Madison, one carry for three yards, so that's 10 carries for 21 yards, 2.1 average as a whole. And the longest run of the day was by Dalvin Cook for six yards. Um, Diggs, two for five on the targets and catches 57 yards, had the 141-yard touchdown. Thielen, five of seven for 50. Um, Herb Smith caught all three of his targets for 39. Dalvin Cook, six of eight for eight yards. Amir Abdullah, one of one for seven. Conklin caught uh, one tight end screen. That was his only target for five yards. Rudolph, two for three for four. And Bradbury, he caught a pass for two yards after it was batted into him. So they were two of 12 on third down, so that's a whopping 17%. Uh, 0 of two on fourth down, 0 of one in the red zone. And... Like I said, with the Niners, technically a zero turnover margin, but it's really minus one. And you're going to talk about the impact of things on the game. Uh, one penalty for 15 yards and held the ball for 21 minutes and 33 seconds. So now, get into all this stuff. Um, offense, just not good as a whole. I think we'd all agree with that. Um, play calling, I want to point out as a big suspect in this a little bit. Um, it kind of felt like like they didn't even want to try to throw the ball more than two centimeters to the line of scrimmage. And it was just screen after screen after screen, even though they were just sniffing out the screens. I was anticipating at some point maybe a double screen or some of that nature to where maybe you get them to go that way. Think, of, oh, no, it's another Dalvin Cook screen. All of a sudden you get... Either another running back, whether it be Ham or Madison or maybe a tight end on it. I don't know. I thought maybe eventually we'd see that. We did not. Uh, but it just felt super conservative, and you can't be that way when you're trying to win a playoff game. I think we'd all agree. Uh, blocking wasn't there at all. Both run and pass protection just wasn't there. It felt like... It, it, yeah, that was partially why it was super conservative, though, because if they held the ball for more than a second, all of a sudden you had Buckner, Bosa, Armstead, whoever it may be on that given down, was just in Kirk's face, and that's not good. Um, run blocking, I feel like Buckner was a big problem. He, 
it just kind of felt like that was the mismatch all day on Elf Line, which I really thought might happen. Um, and it was just kind of a losing situation all around because even with the Kirk's pick, right? I, I know what the narrative's going to be on that. See, big time game. He, he threw a pick. Yeah, but at the same time, Thielen kind of didn't even expect the ball to go there. It was kind of weird. Like, that was kind of a weird play. And right when it happened, I was like, was that supposed to be an option route where he was maybe anticipating him to cut across his face and instead he curled or something? But then when you watch the replay, it even looked like Thielen didn't even expect it to go there. So it's like his receiver might have given up on the route. So it's like without knowing the play call and, well, just what the intention of that play was, It's really hard for me to say that's outright Kirk's fault. That's his fault. He threw that, and that's his thing. That could legitimately be Thielen, like on Thielen, where he's like, oh, I'm on Sherman. I guess I'm not going to get the ball. And then he throws it, and then Thielen's, oh, okay, I guess we're doing this now. So, yeah, it's like, it just, everything was kind of a losing situation no matter what they did. Obviously, there was one good thing in the uh, Thielen not feeling uh, Diggs' 41-yard touchdown throw there. So that was good, but, you know, too little of that. Uh, defensively, the secondary was kind of up and down. Um, they were gashed for bigger plays. Like, just even if you look at their averages, Debo averaged 14 yards a catch, Kendrick Bourne 13.3, and Emmanuel Sanders 16.5. But at the same time, they were able to get an interception from Kendrick's. Um, they couldn't really pressure him. I think that was, like, you know, the biggest part of this. One team got pressure, one really did not. We got some pressure early, and then it really died off from there. Um, but Garoppolo didn't have a great game by any standards, and they were really able to rely on the running game, which is something both of these two teams do, where it's like they want to run the ball, they want to run it effectively and just be dominant there and then basically go to the quarterback and be like, do not mess this up, we're running the ball. (laughs) So that's kind of how both teams want to play this. Um, Run defense was poor. Um, They fell for a lot of the the eye candy, so to speak. Um, A lot of those motions that are used to kind of just take the defender's eyes off of the actual, you know, you know, off the prize for a minute there, and that happened. And in the red zone, it was also super poor because they were they were able just to continue doing that. This was a really good red zone defense coming into today, not so much coming out of the day. <laughs> and there's just not enough impactful plays all around on defense today. Um, special teams, we only have to mention this because Cheryl's buddy just. No. <laughs> um, he was there just because, obviously, Mike Hughes was the punt returner before that. He was on IR. And then you bring back Cheryl's, who's kind of, I guess, a corner, but not really. And the main thing that made him in Minnesota for so many years prior to this and when he got cut, well, before he did anyway, was that he never did that. That was the one thing you knew about Cheryl's is he was going to catch punts cleanly. That's why he was there for nearly 10 years I believe it was so yeah and now he's doing that so it's hard to believe they'll bring him back after they cut him last year um but overall here uh we've seen this team get overwhelmed by good fronts before this was a great front and this really doesn't surprise me that this happened I knew this was a possibility I kind of felt it but I didn't want to say it I was like I don't want to speak it into existence but I could feel that this was gonna be this way and just for considering how poorly the secondary has performed throughout this whole season um it's kind of a miracle that wasn't the downfall and it was in fact the run defense which has been solid but not great kind of for most of the year um but it it feels like they like all year i've kind of felt this way about these things They've needed kind of an impactful player or at least a semi-impactful player next to Linval Joseph because I never really felt Shamar Stefan got the job done quite right. And at left guard, I think you need a guy who can actually hold up in pass protection because when he's one-on-one, it's just 
it, it's a wrap. He's done. Elfline can't just he he can't. He's a good run blocker, but I think you need a guy. That's a position they should be looking to upgrade come this off season potentially. And I do know uh, people are going to come at Kirk because they always come at Kirk every time they lose a game. And they're going to come with the same old sayings, all the narratives, and, you know, he can't win a big game, he can't do this, he's a winning team, he's on the road, guess what, he lost. And I will tell you right now, there's not many quarterbacks in the league that would have won us that game. Um, Everything around him was pretty much collapsing. They couldn't run the ball, they couldn't pass protect, so when you try to throw the ball, he's getting hit, and if you are trying to throw the ball it has to be super quick because otherwise you're getting hit and sacked and now you're getting negative plays so your hope is okay cool so now we have to dump it off and hope he breaks a few tackles they did not put you in a lot of third and longs now you got a lot of problems and then on the other end (laughs) your defense isn't stopping the run so they're constantly out there getting tired and then by the time they get to the red zone it just becomes easy money to get into the end zone and then that's how points build up, and this is how blowouts happen. So I don't think there's many quarterbacks that really could have won us that game, like in the entire league. So I'm not going to pin this game on Kirk, just like I didn't pin the NFC Championship game a few years ago on Case Keenum, because it kind of had a similar feel to this, where everything around him was collapsing to where, guess what? There's not many quarterbacks that can get you out of that situation of things. And the thing that did lose us this game, I thought, was kind of play calling and just getting manhandled at the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. They were just kind of bullied all day long. And it kind of felt like one of the primetime games that we've seen since we've gotten Kirk. I did a video on that. I will link it in the description for those interested. Um, But yeah, now we move on and I'm going to attempt well attempt to get some off season videos out there as soon as I possibly can, you know. Get some hopefully get some good topics in there and mess with some things and see what I can do. But yeah, when I can know your comments down below, you know, your thoughts, opinions, all that good stuff. Um liking and subscribing always helps. And until next time, I bid y'all adieu.